Hey everybody, this is Big Bear. Back here with uh, Be Smart uh, Beekeeping uh, Podcast, weekly podcast, the Bee Hooligans Show. We've got all of the, the main crew here back again for at least as long as we can keep everybody. Uh, we've got some interesting and fun stuff happening. Everybody's got something going on. Uh, down over in Alabama... We'll start it off because Yappy's got some action happening down there. Uh, what's going on over that way, Yappy? Uh, man, I'm running around like a chick with his head cut off. Uh, you probably, some of y'all may have seen on a few of my, one of my last videos. I was talking about my wife was pregnant. Well, <laughs> today's the day, guys. Um, we are uh, we're going to the hospital tonight about eight o'clock. They're they're going to start the process and. Uh, it's going to be kind of exciting for me. This this will be my fourth child born, but I get uh, the doctor. He's made enough money to where I think he can afford the policy that if I mess something up, it'll be okay because he's going to let me deliver the baby. So now y'all don't freak out because I've got 27 years medical experience working with the fire department. So I have, I, it's not really new to me as far as delivering, but you know, I've never actually, you know, sat there with the catcher's mitt on and, and actually done it all myself. So uh, I will have good supervision. Yeah, I'll have good supervision, but this is going to be kind of different. This hey, Yappy, it's not a catcher's mitt. There's really not a catcher's mitt there, Yappy. Just want to let you know that. There, no, I'm bringing one. I'm, I told oh, oh, the doctor. Yeah, it. I said I'm bringing, I'm bringing my catcher's mitt and the mask. Oh, yeah, thing, yeah. you definitely got to have the mask. Yeah, if the, if, the, if that kid comes flying out of there, I mean, good lord, I gotta I gotta protect myself. <laughs> Makes sense. Could come out and start kicking right away. Yeah. Over in you know, uh, Louisiana way, we got uh, Shawi. How you doing, there, Shawi? Doing fine, there, Big Bear. Good what morning, got, everybody. What you doing down that way right now this morning? Uh I'm waiting for a phone call to go see about some bees. Oh, I thought he was waiting for a phone call telling him he was in getting a you know a million bucks. I was wanted to make sure he remembered his buddies up here in Omaha. No, I, I like a little more than a million. Million, uh, just a teaser. <laughs> Can't do much with a million. Well, you could buy shall we uh, a shake and some lunch, shall yeah. we? Or I mean, uh, JP. JP's over there. He's listening to all this. He's he sounds hungry already. I, I know he left the window open. He's gone. He's gone already. Oh, he popped off. Well, I'm sure he'll pop back in. He likes to pop in and out. Here we go. And then down here, Southways, where I'm at in Bellevue, Nebraska, we have yet another beekeeping firefighter or former firefighter with our Anthony G. Well, say something. Yeah, we're introducing you, Anthony. Say something. I did. I can't. You hear me now? <laughs> oh, we can hear you now. No. We yeah, I was hearing Somebody's somebody in the background come up. That was... Yeah, no, I'm just hanging out, uh, getting ready for some weather we're supposed to get this week. So keep me away from my hives. <laughs> so you got to be excited, and I mean, this this is you. You got your bees now. You had them for what a couple of weeks now. Uh, how many times have you been in the hive, Anthony? Three. <laughs> I installed them. Listen, 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 listen. I installed them. Um, then I, I last week we talked about uh, feeding. You know, that's why I asked you about uh, possibly putting a feeder on. So I put feeders on both of them. Uh, both of them ate pretty good out of the feeder. One completely sucked it dry. The other one left about a quarter of left. And then I went in two days ago to remove the feeder and replace it with uh, that second box. Well, on the one. So, yeah. But I plan on leaving it alone for the next two to three weeks. Not going inside of it. Sorry. I've been there. I know how you feel. <clears throat> 
Well, this is the place. So that's one of the reasons we got you here. We want to know if you need, uh, you got questions or you got observations you want to make. I want you to jump right on in there. Uh, we'll see what uh, a whole bunch of hooligans think about those things. Uh, keep us on track a little bit, maybe under the B stuff. Uh, That'll work. Hey, uh, I do have something B related. I, I swear I can't can't get a break. I got two hives that are over here that I've both. One was a cutout that ended up being queenless, and I got another one that uh, long time one that went queenless, and then got a derivative of that one before it went queenless. Got the queen. Queen's not laying, but it was just hived about a week or so ago, so I'm hoping that nothing major is wrong there. Give it one more week, otherwise I'm going to need three queens. I called my good buddy. I said, hey, shall we, brother man, can you hook me up if i got to restart over these hives and not use my local good, uh, good, you know, established, uh, locally adapted queens. I want to give some swamp queens and start to see how well they perform in Nebraska. And he just looked at me and said, uh, no. Can't have them. He said, to hell with you. I'm like, okay. Just tell him, I can, I can you know. with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had a smile about Queens once. He just didn't answer. That's he'll all give it. You a bro- he'll, he'll give you the brother-in-law discount. 1%. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm, I'm, I'm hey, trying to hey, find Queens. Hang on. Hang on a minute. Every week, Tony, you introduce all of us. Nobody ever introduces you. I mean, you just go through this high, it's Tony. So, for Curveball, which is, this is the Be Smart Podcast, and we'd like to start out with Tony from, <laughs> where are you from, Tony? Uh, I'm in South tell Omaha. Us a little bit, tell, South Omaha. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Tony. How was your week, Ben? <laughs> South Omaha, South Omaha. I'm, a South, I'm, a, I'm the original SOB, South Omaha boy. Uh, man, oh, listen, you are so dropping the ball on this, man. We give you your big chance to dude, actually come out and shine. Come on now, Tony. I, I just roll, man. That's I'm just kind of here today. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not. Uh, I, I went deaf yesterday, partially. I had a tire blow up by me, so my ears stopped yeah, what, what, ringing sometime last night. <laughs> what happened? What, what, I was what inflating a tire. My tire was that? low, so I was putting air in it, and because I'm a you fell, and you not all that bright. And B, easily distracted, I had, I had fo- my head too close, the pot tire went kaboom, and everybody looked around like uh, somebody was bombing the gas station, and I couldn't hear anything for the next, like, five hours. So, I got to practice hey, being deaf. Don't you have a, <laughs> didn't you have a, your daughter graduated? My oldest daughter, she did. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of activity. Yeah, going I saw on. That. And you know, the, the the thing that I'm really proud of, because I graduated high school too. I graduated South, you know, South High. But uh, the difference between me graduating and my oldest daughter graduating is, I graduated. I really, truly believe the reason I graduated was just because they wanted to get rid of me. They were done with me. It's not that I had necessarily the the grades or whatever. They just said, "Get this yo yo the hell out of here." Whereas my daughter, she actually knows stuff. So I'm, mean, you know, it's kind of <laughs> something to celebrate, you know. They celebrated well, when I graduated because they got rid of me. I was just like, okay, I'm done there. But everybody's happy because my daughter graduated and came out actually knowing stuff and remembering being in high school. Well, I got I got one in December. Graduate from college and nursing school. So oh, there we go. I'm trying to convince you to be an entomologist or something. Is nobody? I can't get any of my kids to take that up yet. I'm a Listen, do you guys a big pay raise when that happens? <laughs> yeah, rub it in, guys. I'm the guy that's having another baby today. How old? Well, how old is your oldest, Yappy? Uh, well, I've got uh, first marriage. I've got actually got a daughter that's 16, and uh, she lives with her mom up in Tennessee. Uh, love her to death, miss her to death, but. Um, you know, I'm glad she lives up there. It's beautiful, beautiful country up there. But I've got an eight, a six-year-old daughters, and I've got a drone on the way today. So, yeah, um, I'm pretty, yeah, I'm pretty much going to die a gray-haired man at 50 years old. That's right. Can't help. Well, if if it weren't for my little excursion vacations down there to 
uh, swamp land with <laughs> JP and Shall we? I probably would go stir crazy. See, it's the bee. Being a beekeeper has 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 helped you get out and and keep your keep your balance in the world. It it, it helps you see. At least I try. Makes a good write off <laughs> too. Yeah. Because you're using those as business write-offs. You're going for business training, right? So you can write that off. Oh, every time I go down there, it's for school. That's right. That's right. That's I'm educating myself. So, I, I, anyway. Hey, are we going to talk about bees or are we going to talk about my, my kids all day? What are we talking about today? Well, you're you calling your kid a drone, bees. so it could be bees. Well, really? I'm turning around. I'm, if I start calling it a drone now, then I get more of a tax write off with this kid. Well, well, well yeah, but, yeah, but what is going to be a drone or a queen? No, it's a drone. Oh, it's a drone. Is this your first drone? Yes, yes my first drone. Ooh. I wouldn't. I wouldn't know how to raise a drone. See, I, I, I got it. My, I got one. He's stuck in between two girls. Yeah, I feel sorry for him because he gets, I mean, he, he's in a bad situation. Either side, he turns around. So I, I have to rescue him every once in a while because just gets uh, overwhelmed by being around nothing but uh, workers. And they try to take that serious, boy. They try to boss that boy around more than I can keep track of. Yeah. Hey, you know, Tony, if you have one more, you might be able to get an entomologist. So, you know. Well, you know. I- I want another kid. That's not likely. That's just not likely. Uh, I, I've had about all the fun I can stand. Raising cheerings. You never know, though. I might still con one of them. I mean, you know, convince one. <clears throat> but JP, you're awful quiet, bud. I'm just listening. Okay, you well, I'm curious. I'm curious because I see you guys, and I'm jealous and I'm envious because I see all the great comments and questions and all that that you guys get on your your groups and Facebook and whatnot. And uh, so I want to ask you, what's your favorite question that you've been asked to answer about beekeeping? And I'm going to start with JP because you've got the biggest group amongst us. Favorite question. Something in the last week, maybe, that just popped up that really caught your attention. You you really got into answering that or seeing the answer come out. Huh. Think about that a minute. How about you, shall we? You got something that came up recently? Well, it's not a favorite, but I get it all the time. Uh Uh-huh. When when do add another box? Uh Oh, that's a timely question. Uh, my opinion is, you know, when they're building up, you know, when they got three frames left to draw in a 10 frame box, you know, you can add another box. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, during the flow too, you know, when they, when they're drawing it out, I like to add a box when I need it. Sometimes I put on two, but most of the time it's just one. Uh, but that, that was one of the questions, you know, I had people say, I put all the boxes on, you know, uh, yeah. uh, you know, if that's what they do, that's fine. Uh, I don't do it. Um, uh, I can understand if you go into a place and the floor is just starting and you won't be there for a week or two or something like that, three weeks, you know, uh, you throw all your boxes on, I would imagine. But, uh, you know, that's what I do, but that's a lot of questions people ask. You know, yeah. You know they they, they want to throw a, a bunch of boxes on with a little bit of beach. And you're you know? saying, preferably, you're saying wait until they actually need it rather than being preemptive, unless you have right. no choice. Right. Now I know you know the commercial beekeepers. You know they they're running a different operation when they you know when their flow is on and stuff. I mean, when the flow is on, you can add your boxes. I mean, they're going to draw it out, and fill it up. You know. Right. But. I just don't like leaving boxes on when the flow ain't really kicked in yet, you know. True. Uh, and I usually don't do that because I got I have time now. If you don't have time, you know, I can understand that. You well, know? I think also proximity has to do. You know, I mean, if you got you live in the middle of downtown, wherever you're at, and you your hives are kept out on mom and dad's, you know, ten acres 
40 miles away. It's kind of hard to get to every, you know, week or something sometimes. So right. you may want to consider just because of how close it is or not. Yep. But on the general, uh, I think, yeah. You know, and I, I agree with that in a way, you know. But, uh, you well, know, so, yeah, people, you don't want to overdo it that, either, though. Buy yourself right. like a week or two. Well, some people would take that as, well, you know, once they fill up my, my brood, I'm just going to lay the boxes on. They're going to put it in sooner or later, oh, you know. Yeah. Um, I don't think that's a good idea. Yeah, makes sense. What do you think? Yep. Got an answer to that one? I'm low. Actually, no. I had you on mute so you didn't have to hear me walking around through the Gander Mountain. <laughs> You're good. Well, I ain't gonna lie about it. Are you on? <laughs> At least we're all involved. Okay, JP, you got an opinion on that one? I was just gonna say, you know, you can always take the box off if they're not doing anything. <coughs> but I mean, my general rule of thumb is, you know, seven to ten frames drawn at another box. Uh, of course, it depends on how many bees you have too. You know, you could have a a lot of bees and um you know just looking at it you know they're going to need more room and they especially as it gets warmer so you know does doesn't hurt even giving them a little extra space doesn't hurt sometimes even if they haven't drawn out you know what you know that's 80 percent or whatever um i actually had a guy i I told Shaw we I said this guy's probably gonna call me every five minutes, I know it. Uh I sold him a nuke and uh he transferred him into his ten frame deep. And um you know, I told him, I said, you know, read up all you can, you know, read up all you can. And uh we called me the other day, he's like, Should I hit another box? I'm like, Well, you need to go in, do an inspection. And, uh, you know, I mean, how, I, I can't tell you if you can add another box or not. You know, you, you're the beekeeper. You know, you got to you got to do this. But you know, a lot, a lot, a lot of it is is uh, a lot of it's, I, I guess, common sense. You know, uh, in this day and age, and I mean, we're here to help. Obviously, we're here to help, but. I see a lot of questions out there that are asked and that can be answered pretty easily if the the person asking it would just go in there hot and take, take a look. They can figure it out. Yeah, that's a good point. You and I are a lot the same way in that because we're kind of good back to that point where uh, in, in a week or two, two ago in, in a, one of the podcasts we were talking about keeping – colonies as sterile as possible mentality that organic you know doing as they normally or naturally would kind of behavior see and i'm 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 of the same mindset as you i like let the bees tell me what they need i don't try to you know tell them what to do force what i'm trying to do on them i i get an idea of what they're going to need over time and then i let them tell me you know that requires the inspection that requires to go in and see what's going on and what are they doing because every colony is different i can have three hives in my backyard and each one of those could be have different needs one may be going gangbusters in need of one or two boxes added another one may be just crawling slow having some troubles it you know adding a box would just actually cause more problems for them yeah you know so soon i mean every colony has its own thing so you can't to me it's not a good idea to just automatically assume i got three hives i need to add you know it's june 1st it's time to add two boxes or one box or whatever to each one because of time and the calendar and the book said this you got to pay you got, to me it's always best to let the hive the colony tell you what they need when they need it you know you and that's, just have and that's to be, why yeah, that's why that's why new beekeepers, you know, it's always recommended that they actually go in their hives more than you know seasoned beekeepers normally would, because you know if you don't know what's going on in there, if you don't have that the experience under your belt, you know how are you how are you going to learn? So you need to go in there, observe what what, what they're doing. Oh, and I got the answer to that. Like you, like you said, let the let the bees be your teacher. Okay, you know the so good way to okay. deal with that. 
you, you instead of opening, I tell all my newbies, don't open your hives that much because they've usually spent a lot of money to get those bees. And you don't want to have them lose those bees and let you get open in a hive too much. It can, it can, it can kill those colonies off or have a net detrimental effect. But if you work with a mentor or, or somebody, you go help them for the first year or whatever. Go play with their bees. If they've got multiple hives, you know, they can schedule when they're going to do inspections so it balances out. Not the same hive as being opened every week or something. And you get your fix and learning by going and helping somebody else who's not going to teach you to kill their bees. They're going to teach you to do the right things. And you still get that, that every, that consistent, you know, let, looking at the bees and watching and observing without having to open your own hive every, you know, over, over much or too much. That's my, well, I'm going to agree. I'm going to agree and disagree with you on that. Uh, in the preliminary stages, you know, and depending on, you know, how you've started your colonies, if, if you started started with packages, and obviously you know you want to leave them alone until they they're established. Because if you go in there too much, you can cause them you know to abscond. But if you had a you know relatively established colony, they're not going anywhere. I'm going to say that a, a new beekeeper you know should go in there. I'm, I'm not talking about take the thing apart and, and and spend an hour you know with the top cover off, but I, I would I would say a new beekeeper should go in more often and um, see what's going on, see how they're drawing a comb out, you know, look look for eggs, you know, try to spot the queen. But I, I'd say I'd say maybe twice a week. I don't think it. I, I think twice a week is not going to really hurt anything. Hmm. Well, that's the beauty of of everybody doing things. That's this. But I think generally we're saying mostly the same thing, and that's just a matter of how often is we're looking for. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm, I might, I might say a little bit more, often, <laughs> but you're saying once a week. I'm saying twice a week. Anyway. Oh, you know, it, it, it's all potatoes, good. potatoes. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Uh, and you know, one thing that may work is if you have as a new bee, you know. Uh, you can arrange that to go in every so often, so many times, but not necessarily maybe have to be the same hive by having more than one hive. So if you have, you start off with two hives, you know, you can open hive this day and then a couple of days later open a second hive, you know, or, or, you know, twice in one week or something. So you're still getting in two beehives twice in a week or so, but it doesn't have to be necessarily the same hive and you can. Right, kinda, right. Yeah. yeah. If you got, yeah. Yeah. On, that's a way to price, alleviate your numbers. That. I think the important just, thing is that they're seeing bees, not just necessarily the same bees all the time. Right, and then, and then of course, sitting there and just watching them come and go, you know, and, uh, oh, yeah. you know, uh, uh, you get this is a, a common theme to hear over and over each season uh, is orientation flights. You know, new, new beekeepers, are, they don't know what, what that is, uh, and they're experiencing it for the first time. And uh, I mean, we've all been there. It's like, oh man, my bees are, are they going to swarm? <laughs> you know. But um, yeah, <laughs> uh, I get a kick out of that one. But once once you know what's going on, and it's like, okay, you know. So you know, basically, uh, since since I brought it up, you know, you you you're going to have some orientation flights. Uh, I find it usually in the evening, and it'll occur usually about fifteen twenty minutes. And then uh, you got your normal activity, and of course the the bees orient. No, the the bees are about twenty days old. The bees are about to come foragers. Um, whereas a swarm, you have a mass exodus, and there's no mistake. And the bees are just pouring out of the hive. So, yeah. Any you any you newbies out there who haven't seen that yet? I don't know if you've seen that uh, yet yourself, Anthony. I don't uh, know. If, I've if, seen if you've swarm, had, but. Have Not you uh, you got your bees as nukes, Anthony? I can't remember what you said. Or packages? Yeah, I got nukes. Okay, okay. So you could you, you'll you'll start to see that. Don't freak out when you see that circling. Okay. Oh, hey, he's <laughs> really going to get some good experience. So. 
because we're starting to head into a uh, higher 80s and and 90s in this next couple of weeks. So he's going to not only get to see that, he gets to see the bearding too, which oh. I I can tell you that gets me just as many calls about I'm about to have my bee swimming. It's just bearding, you know. Yeah. Well, then he's going to get to see him washboarding and wonder what the <laughs> hell that is, huh? <laughs> I don't think anybody's figured out exactly that one. It's funny, though. Some of the videos you see on it looks like beeline dancing. <laughs> I just The thing is, if I don't go check my bees and don't bother them or just go and watch. Now, when you saying, because like I was saying, what I had planned on doing was just leaving my hives alone, you know, as far as not opening them um, for the next couple of weeks. But... JP, you're saying take advantage of this since I did go with nukes. And, uh, well, the little things, you know, you go in, you, you get to see how they're drawing comb. Okay. You want to see that, you know, you want to, you know, see how she's laying. Um, uh, you know, you pull a frame, you can watch the queen walk around and lay an egg right before your eyes. A lot of times they'll do that. Um, uh, you know, you get to see some bees emerging. Um, it's to see them festooning, and then they form that chain. I mean, all those things. If, unless you go in there, you're not, you're gonna you're gonna miss miss out on that. So, and and in the beginning stages of uh, just starting out, you know, that all that stuff is really really kind of neat, and don't want you to miss out on those little Christmas gifts. Yeah, I went in. Um to one of my hives and I was able to go to the frame and see them starting to draw out. That's when I... I'm mentally prepped for tonight. <laughs> so it's kind of been... I've been able to see... I've been able to locate the queen and watch her walk around a little bit in one of the hives. Um, I am seeing the difference. Like one hive has a few ants and... uh the other hive has no ants, so I got to go out and take care of that issue or address it, anyways. Are you using uh, what? What are you using? Foundation? Uh, what? What are you using? One of What's them frames. One of them was foundationless, and one of them was foundation. It's a foundationless that, um, except for the new. Um, foundationless has the uh, ants. Okay, well, you know, obviously you, just, you you do need to go in periodically probably a little bit more often with the one that's foundationless just to make sure, you know, they're drawing comb like they, they should be drawing. Because, uh, you know, sometimes with foundationless frames, the issue could be cross-combing. And if they do too much of that, you're gonna have to go in and cut some of that out, because um, if they cross come, and I mean, if, if you waited a couple of weeks to go in, whatever, in, in a good flow, and you go to grab a frame, when when you pull it up, you're gonna have honey spill. Gotcha. I don't know if that's if some of that's happening right now, but that's maybe why you got some ants. I don't I don't know. Uh, you experience any of that? Uh. Like I said, I've only been in three times. I've only had them for two weeks. Uh, I was going to leave them alone. But I think, you know, except for addressing the ants, but I'll make it a point to get out there because it's supposed to rain tonight. Um, so I might get yeah get out there and see if I have any cross combing, see if they're uh, um, – but the uh, – like when I took the five, I took five frames out. So I had five foundationless frames that had the uh, guide, the comb guide in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that should help. But I, can, you know, I have to go check it out. It it should help. It, it, it's just a guide, but sometimes they they'll throw a curveball on you and say, "Well, no, we're not gonna follow that guide. We're gonna use our own." You know, and they can get if you don't go in. Can't they just listen to the book? You know, 
Yeah, yeah really. Andy, the, the thing is, though, you've got sugar water on your hives right now, right? No, I took that off two days ago. Or, yeah, okay. two days ago. Okay, so, but, but you know, you, your ant problem is because you got a high sugar uh, syrup that you'd had put on there. Um, you know, well, one, the is, one is not having a problem with the ant. The other one, he is. Maybe, maybe that one you're having a problem, maybe, maybe it's leaking a little bit or something. And maybe the one that's got the ants is just closer to the to the ant colony, and that's the one that they're tearing or terrorizing. But I, I mean, not to take anything away from what JP said because there's something that's going on. But um, you know, I, I've I've kind of noticed that in some aspects where, you know, yeah, why is it the one over there's got ants in it, but this one don't? And another thought is that it's just because that's the ants are closer to that one, and and they can travel. Ants can uh, travel, dude. <laughs> Listen, you no. We put up a wall, okay? We put up a wall, and they don't have passports to go that far. Dude, really? Well, really. What, what, who do you think built the wall? They built tunnels, dude. Come on, really? Ah! The question Good. I have. Right. Right. <laughs> telling you, if you go out there, go go look around uh, within about ten feet of that, about ten feet of that hive, you'll find a. a a little dirt pile where the ants are coming from. The question I would have is, what kind of ants? Okay, well, um, yeah, we actually noticed a couple ants. The first ant uh, out there, uh, black ant. As the kind, I don't know. Okay, I mean, oh, I guess what I'm driving to, guys, a swarm. Cool. <laughs> Check that out. Well, actually, a tail end of it. Oh, that's something. going to be something that they landed in my box while I'm driving. That'd be cool. I'd have to hate you. I really would. Um, the only time the only time I've ever had a problem with ants was uh, these little black ants called acrobat ants, and um, because they're almost like they're similar to carpenter ants. They'll They'll, uh, they're protein feeders for the most part, but I've I've seen them cause the colony to be to get on the outside of the of the hive even, and I I think they've caused some to abscond. But other than that, I I usually don't have problems with ants. Uh, never I've never had problems with fire ants. Um, but I mean, unless they cause any problem, I re- I, I mean I usually don't do do much. Uh, to get them to go away, Anthony. Because um, I mean, I guess some. I guess you got to look at, you know, what what your approach is to. Um, what did you What did you do to to get your problem to go away, Anthony? Uh, well, like I said, the ant started before the feeder, and there literally was ten ants. When I, um, in the hive, where I had the feeder, we were on the outside of the hive, nothing around the feeder, none in the feeder when I removed the feeder. So, I'm thinking it... Oh, hey, somebody just traveling in a scuba suit. Is that you, yeah, Anthony? Anthony? No, that wasn't me. I I mic'd his, or I oh. muted. But, uh, so that's why I said I had to get out and see what they were doing, because I brushed all the ants away, um, and I was just going to make a barrier with cinnamon, because it was just, it wasn't a lot to where they were, like, overtaking. And like I said, they were on the outside of the boxes, not on the inside. I didn't see any evidence inside. So I got to go check that out a little more. You know, and I was going to throw some cinnamon around things. Barbecue sauce. Hot, spicy barbecue sauce. Hot and spicy barbecue sauce? Yeah. Then a man going to have the lightest bit after that. You ain't lying. <laughs> oh, I'm not talking about the ants. I'm, I'm just kind of hungry right now, and I was thinking about <laughs> the hot and spicy barbecue sauce. <laughs> Uh, 
That's yeah, just the well, way that rolls. Do. You know, some days I got to get reason again. I like that. <laughs> Serious. Well, I don't want to be one of those guys, but uh, I kind of am. Uh, well, everybody has to be one one time or, or another. Uh, shall we? Queens. Yes. Queen, queens, queens. I had somebody ask me a queen rearing question saying that they have um, a uh, a problem every year in their area with queens um, because they feel that they don't get good quality queen uh, mating from their neighborhood, from their area, whenever they see that their colonies are requeening themselves or anything like that. Um, now, I know what advice I've given them in terms of uh, – you know, paying attention to what kind of uh, other colonies are around and et cetera. But there's ways you can, a person can affect that. And I think you would be the best person to start that discussion off. What can people do to help when they realize they're not getting good queen uh, mating happening in, in their backyard hive, so to speak? Well, Are they making their queens, or, or that's the the hive swarm? The people, they... the people I've asked, I think, have been, uh, or the people who asked me rather uh, that I answered their questions, they were having the issues where um, this is a recent question I dealt with, where they were having the, the issue where they they let their bees uh, requeen themselves as they will, so to speak, whenever they swarm or if something happens. Instead of introducing a new queen, they just let the bees go ahead and make one of their own. But it seems right. like lately, the, for the last two years, he said, any time that it's happened, it seems like they always they're they're getting very poorly mated queens from everything he's researched and and, and observed. Um, so I gave him some pointers about uh, what he can do to to improve that. Uh, but I wanted to get your take on it, and then I'll I'll let you know what I told him. To... Well, it, you have different uh, variables on on a queen getting mated. Uh, right. Uh, you know, weather plays a lot to do with it. You know, uh, if, if they can't get out and get mated like they're supposed to, uh, you know, usually they'll go on a, a, a flight and uh, or two. But if the weather's bad and you know they mate with a few drones and stuff and they have to come in uh, and can't get back out well, you know, and she passed that window going back out again, you know, she's not going to be a, a, a good queen. Uh, you know, that's that's one thing that plays a part in it. Uh, another thing is, is the genetics, you know, of, of the bees, of the queens. You know, if, if, if you don't have good genetics on that queen, well, her daughters are going to be the same. You know, it follows them. Yeah. So, well, you know, here's a good uh, question. Here's something I wanted to bring up to you then, because you, you, you kind of alluded to this because of all the different variables that go into this. And, and this is something that we've had a, we've kind of talked to about before, but how can you tell or what, what indicators are there from your point of view that you, it's poor mating or poor nutrition? Well, Poor nutrition comes, you know, I tell people when when you look at a, a, a cell that, that hatched, uh, that a, a, a queen emerges from, a lot of times, you know, when she's going to be a good fed queen, they're going to have some raw jelly left over in there. Uh, a lot of your swarm cells are like that, too. Uh, but uh, sometimes your emergency cells are, are like if you... Uh, you know, I have people that, that try to uh, make some queens, you know, by taking the frame of eggs and putting it in a, a, a little hive or stuff, but they don't have enough bees. You know, uh, nutrition is, 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 a, is a real important thing on uh, making a good queen. Uh, if she's not fed good, she won't be a good queen. Right. You know, uh, the second thing is that that comes in is the genetics of that queen. Uh, you know, if, if you got real good genetics and that queen uh, is fed good and 
uh, goes out and just made it, you know, it's, it's, you know, 15 or 18 drones or whatever, and she gets made it real good, well, she's going to be a top-notch queen. But if one of them variables are missing, um, it, it'll show up in that queen. So you do know? you have let a me, checklist of let, things that – go ahead. Let me – let me th- let me just add one other thing here Go ahead. Um, that comes to mind. Um, I mean, if this is something that's happening in, on a consistent basis, of course, you know, the, the, the variables come into play that uh, we mentioned. But uh, but also, I mean, you you might just be in, a, in an area where you don't have a, a lot of a lot of bees. Right. To, uh, you know, to. to for the queens to get mated with, so right. you you're either going to have to create another you know uh, mating yard uh, with with the drones, infiltrate it with drones the area, or uh, you know maybe find another yard. Right. Um, so that, that's, that was that's, my that's next true. Thing to suggest after that's, was, but that's you know. true with beekeeping in general. I mean, if you're you know getting if you, if you're in an area where you you don't you know your, your bees never make any honey, you know what I mean. Well, yeah. Sounds try another try another location. You know, you might be in an area where it's as far as that goes. You might be in an area where you just have high competition. Of, of course, your, your queens will get mated though. Yeah, right. I mean, I, I don't have a problem with 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 drones, but you know, that was my next thing I was going to come up with was, you know, I have drone yards, uh, and it's not per se to, because I'm low on drones. It's because it's, it's what I want into my uh, that get bred into my queens now. Uh, will they get bred with the feral colony that's around too? Yes. But, well, but if you flood these drone areas with your drones, you know, or if you don't have enough drones to take care of your queen, you make you some drone hives and then, you know, it take care of that. Well, let's, let's make a, let's make a shall we and, and, and uh, let's make a be smart, uh, checklist or flow chart here. Somebody says, okay, I want to go out in my apiary, my hives, and I want to diagnose my queen who seems to be doing poorly. Okay. How do I decide if it's poor mating or poor nutrition that she's suffering? What am I going to look for to say, oh, this is going to be more likely nutrition? What am I going to notice or see that's going to indicate uh, poor you know, poor, poor nutrition versus poor mating. Right. Well, it, it, like I said, it, it, it just depends. You, you would have to. Oh, hold on. Somebody's driving. Hang on. I thought I muted y'all. Sorry. You dirty dog. All right. Go All ahead, right. shall we? He's always muting when I'm talking. You notice that, huh? <laughs> but uh, you know, it's 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 hard to say. You know, you got you have so many variables in it. Right. But if 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 you got a queen that's that's a top notch queen in there, and 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 you you want to make some uh queens off of, they're gonna swarm or something. You know, the genetics should be in there. But to to come out and say, okay, well, um, the nutrition part was was off and stuff like that, um, or um. She wasn't made it enough and stuff like that. I don't know if you can tell one from the other, okay. uh, you know, what, what happened with her. Right. Uh, you just have to make sure you cover all your bases on it when you're doing it uh, to prevent that from happening. But if you take a, a mediocre queen and, and okay, for instance, if I, if I take a queen that, that that's uh, never did anything from day one, you know, just a spotty laying queen and, you know, the genetics aren't really there. And I grab from her. Well, guess what's going to happen? It, you, the genetics is going to follow that, right. you know, uh, compared to one that just a boomer. Now, toward the end, they will fizzle out, uh, you know, when they get old. But, but you know, if, if you have a good queen uh, that you want to either grab from or let them make a queen, uh, you know, I would go ahead and do it. But but to come out and say, well, you know, you have to make sure the, the feed's there. Um, and like I said, you know, when you look in a cell, you ought to have some, some uh, 
raw jelly left in it. Right. You know, that 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 determines that she was well fed, you know. But they're uh, gonna clean that up so you I'll can't like go up. in there a month later. You know, you gotta get in there. Right, like, right. Be, you, pretty, I mean pretty, you, pretty you ought to know when she's gonna when they're gonna be hatching this. Right. Okay. To, to take a look at. But you know, I, I went ahead and, and, and did some experiments on that, uh and tearing open some queen cells and just looking to see uh the difference in it. And I had some that was still in there that, that didn't have no more feed left in them, you know, and, right. and it still had to grow. There was still a grub, you know, and, 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 and you need that, you need that cell full, you know, and then you, you tear into other cells and they got way more than what they need, See you know. Uh, now, this is, I'm going to, as comparison, I want to let you know what I told them, okay, because they asked me for a checklist what do I look for? How do I tell, you know, a flow chart? What's, what's, uh, you know, nutrition issues versus mating issues versus, you know, different things like that. And I gave them pretty much the same thing you just said. My point was the most control short of artificial insemination that we can have if we're doing any, any kind of open breeding is to where we're, we, it's all in the preparation and, in, 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 in getting it up front, getting it all kicked off. Like you said, you have good genetics to start with, You're selected from good queen lines, you know, uh, and, in, in stock from the get go on that side of it. Uh, like JP says, I said, you know, you want to kind of what I call stack in the deck, you know, you want to send, you know, send somebody to the, to the club to pick up, you know, pick up on some, so, some drones, so to speak, but you want to make sure they're going to meet the guys, the drones that you, you prefer. So you stack that drones congregation area with exactly. the drones you want, you know, so, but it's all preparation oriented beyond that, you know, nutrition, you make sure that that, to me, it's like, if you've got a colony that needs to make a queen, I don't put sugar syrup on her. I take, I will, I would sooner take frames of honey and put extra frames yeah. of honey in a colony that's making a new, uh, a queen rather than sugar syrup. Cause you got, like you said, they got to be well fed, lots of pollen, lots of, lots of honey. So it's right. all in the preparation. Once you get to the point where she's going out to mate, it's out of your hands except for pushing the, uh, some drone, you know, uh, producers out there. <clears throat> that's, it's, it's, that's pretty much it. And even yeah. having said that, you're not always still going to be guaranteed because a host of other things can come back. She could go out. She could be of good stock. She could be mated well. Uh, she good nutrition. You can have all of those things come back and still there could be other issues going on. And you just have to test them out, you know. Uh, right. Even Queens though, you know, means you got to be involved. You have to be you know, all, all, all what I do with my queens and stuff, and, 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 and that's another reason I let them lay 20, 21 days right. where I can look at their patterns and stuff, you know. Uh, even though I, I went for the best, uh, they were fed the best, they were made it or whatever, I still get a few of them that's duds, uh, mm-hmm. and that's why I pinch them. You know, I don't sell them. Uh, but that, that 21 day observation on them when they lay in tells me a lot. Oh, you know, yeah. uh, if, so, if, if if she's not laying good, she's never gonna lay good. Right. You know, it's it's a, you it's can important, tell right off you know? the bat. And if you're gonna try to make your own queens, and I think everybody really should try where they're at as much as possible, is to uh, you just have to be involved. It's something that requires you to stay uh, in the whole process. Keep an eye, you know, like you said, stacking that deck as much as you can. Like just stack right. the deck on nutrition, stack the deck on the drones, stack the deck on, you know, uh, just everything. And like I said, it, sure, it, it, it's it either that or difference. artificial insemination, you know. Yeah, you know, but but a, a thing they need to look at too is is is, is when they, if they have a hive that's swarming and they make a bunch of swarm cells, and after they cap, they need to open them up and see the the, the amount because some of your best queens come from swarms. Oh, absolutely. Okay? Uh, to see how well fed they were, uh, to putting a, a frame of eggs in or. Uh, Especially emergency queens, uh, 
you open some of them up and you're going to like, wow, where's the fee? You know, and and right off the bat, where well, they make an emergency queen, um, you know, they're in a rush to do it. Uh, and, and they might not put enough feed in there. You know, when you see a grub that's still in there uh, and, and they don't have no more raw jelly, you know, that's not good. True. She's still going to be a queen. She's still going to go out and get mated. But, but that one thing is missing and, and couldn't hurt her. Yeah. You guys, anybody so, else got any anything to add to that? Queens? Yeah. JP? No? I don't know if he's still there. Yeah, I'm a sad thing he dropped. Well, what about you? Yeah. Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm all about the drones right now. So, <laughs> yeah, that's all I got. I'm afraid this today's is drone. The drone, the drone is coming. Yep. Hey, this ain't no, this ain't no lie. I'll tell you what, I've got a, an understanding that Bisifris is on duty at the hospital today. Oh, so no. I'm afraid, afraid of what's going to happen as far as him showing up, helping to deliver this thing. You Dude, know, it's a hospital. Bought- they can kick anybody out. You know, you know I, I'm not saying kicking him out. He's he going to be in jail. He's going to arrest your butt. All I'm telling you is is that I understand Pacifras is on duty. That's I'm leaving it at that. Well, fellas, uh, looking at the time, we've managed a while away just talking about Queens and all of that already. Uh, yeah, congratulations, buddy. Um, I hope everything goes well for you. Well wishes uh, on your drone and and everything. Let us know how it all turns out. And uh, uh, we'll do you have a name again? No, not yet. Here's the crazy thing. I'll try to make it quick. Yeah, I know it's a drone, but my wife did not want to know if it was going to be a boy or a girl. Uh, so. She's kind of thrown some names out there, but there's nothing official yet because, you know, she doesn't know if it's a boy or a girl. So we just kind of left that one hanging. Yappy Jr.? Uh, maybe so. The Cypress you know, Jr. I, 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 if it's a girl, girl's name, you know, I'd suggest uh, Melissa because that's Latin. It's, it's the, yeah, he was listening, Yappy. <laughs> Bubba for a boy. If it's Bubba. Bubba B for B Smart, Bubba because, well, by golly, you are in Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> Just know I'm I'm doing my part to keep the hooligans, uh, you know, recycling. So we'll have a new hooligan here before long. That's awesome. Can't wait. All right, guys. Yep. Have a good one. Shall we? Thanks, last bro. shout. Got the last word? Yeah, uh, y'all. Be smart, be wise, and uh, be doing everything y'all can with y'all beans. Be involved. I think that comes That's from right. our conversation now. Be involved with your beans. That's it. You know, even just sitting out there watching them. I love laying down in front of the hive. Uh, I had a, a, my neighbor come check on me one time. She thought I passed out, but I was just <laughs> laying down watching the beans, you know. Oh, no, he got stuck. Observing. Started. Yeah. Can you imagine somebody calling the ambulance? They thought you got stung and had a bad a bad reaction. <laughs> JP, still with us, buddy? I'm with you. All right, man. Well, I'm you got any you. last y'all, words? We're about to wrap this out. Well, y'all uh, pay attention to what your bees are trying to tell you. And be sweet. And be smart. And see you on the next one. Bye. Huh. Andy? Be easy. <laughs> I love retirement. I got to throw that out there. It's All right, up. everybody. This is, uh, for this week. And be smart, be hooligans. But we'll catch you again seven days from then. Have a good one.